Hey, what's up guys? The Explanation Pro is here. Today, I'll explain a South Korean black comedy film titled Collective Invention. Spoilers incoming! At the beginning of the movie, a strange stranger appears, throwing civilization into chaos. An unemployed miser named Park Gu, Lee Kwon Soo, signs up for what seems to be easy money in medical research. Gu decides to participate in this medical experiment in return for a pittance of 300,000 won. To make ends meet, an unfortunate medical experiment goes terribly wrong, turning the patient into an aquatic human-fish hybrid bipedal mutant. Unfortunately, Sang Won, an intern at the local television news station, learns about the fishman via a source of the station. Because he was a recent community college graduate, the interviewer was unsure whether or not they would accept him as an intern. On the question of whether he had any special abilities, I can do everything well given the opportunity. To find out if Sang Won is really qualified for the position, the guy requested that Sang Won take part in an interview with his company. Upon rising, he inquired, am I already hired? After receiving the given document, with a grin on his face, the interviewer said, no! Sang Won was perplexed for a while. He chooses to investigate the Fishman legend to determine whether it is based on facts. The Fishman was the subject of Sang investigation once the next day. In the end, he saw an article on a site where a large number of people were discussing this incident. He came to find a remark from a lady who claimed that her boyfriend was the one who took part in the unsuccessful experiment. The report sparked a massive debate on the internet, with many arguing about its validity. There is no way this woman would ever concede the argument, insisting that she was utterly speaking the truth throughout. Sang Won had a light bulb go out in his brain. While completing his cup of noodles, he made the decision to go in search of this lady and conduct an interview with her, stating, It would be nice if I could find out why she's making all these things. The following day, he boarded a bus from the lady's residence and, and finally recalled everything the interviewee had asked him to keep in mind. He had not been employed at the time. The station's workers went on strike, which is why there is a lack of personnel to conduct this interview. He stressed to Sang Won that all information should be kept confidential, including the news station from which he had come from. As a result, he removed the emblem of the station from the camera. Additionally, if he is successful in this interview, the interviewee will determine whether or not he will be hired for the position. When he got to the apartment, he was worried since the windows had so much graffiti. The following scene shows the fishman, Park Gu, resting at his girlfriend's apartment with a cup of tea in his hand. Despite his efforts, the fishman escaped from the Gani Medical Laboratory and told Jin, Park Bu Young, of all that happened to him which resulted in his metamorphosis into a hybrid of a half-fish and half-man. The last thing Jin wants is Gu to get caught up in his transformation process and become embroiled in the chaos that is currently taking place in her flat. On the other hand, Fishman is powerless since the scientists know his personal information, which includes his home address. Consequently, he has nowhere to go further than his girlfriend's crib to conceal his activities. The presence of Gu makes Jin uncomfortable, so she excuses herself to go fetch something from the kitchen. Chatting, she began looking up a phone number on the internet, which turned out to be Ganmi Medical's contact information. In order to reach that number, Jin dialed it and met with an endless series of operation options. When she finally got through the operator, she quickly inquired, How much will you charge me to have your escapee back? These were the specifics she shared with the reporter about her situation. As she was interrogated by Sang Won in front of the camera set up in her apartment for the interview, she made the daring statement. Sang Won is puzzled as to why she sold Gu back to the scientists in the first place. Why can't I? She said, her voice calm. It is a capitalistic society in which we live, and we weren't even dating that time. She was relating the story of how she and Sang Won met on the set of the movie. In the film they worked on, they were both extras and Gu was smitten with her. Thus, their one-night stand was born. Sang Won paid close attention to every aspect, taking notes on his notebook as he went. He couldn't focus one more than one thing at a time so he was unsure of what he was writing. It's beginning to get on Jin's nerves that Sang Won isn't interested in going into further depth. She recommended that we have a look at what the camera captured. Meanwhile, Gami Medical, in order to locate Fishman, Jin and Sang Won sneak inside the facility discreetly. They're both cunning enough to deliberately disable the fire alarm and search the whole laboratory. They discovered Gu in a dark room after looking for a short time. Besides Jin and Sang Won, the security guard on duty also has Jin and Sang Won in his sights. As soon as Sang Won's camera captured the moment, it was all over the news. After then, the public was made aware of the flawed experiment. As a result, Ganmi Medical is under investigation by the authorities for allegedly violating Gu's civil and political rights. As a result of Sang's successful inquiry into the alleged human fish, the station director gave him a temporary position back at the office and said, Thank you so much. In his ears was a grin that said, I will do my best. Sang Won's mission to Fishman would be taken up by the workers after they returned from their strike movement. 
According to the director, who said that they're better competent, right? Questioned the director to Sang Won. He was floored by the experience despite this. He remains upbeat about the situation. After then, Sang Won began filming his documentary about Park Gu. From his modest beginnings in elementary school, through middle school, and into his college years. Are there any details that come to mind? Gu inquired Sang Moon. Gu's father showed up while the interview was still going on. When Sang Woon's conducted an interview with Gu, his father was enraged. He's worried he'll make fun of Gu in front of the others. Then they continued the documentary. On the other hand, press conferences are also being used to interview Dr. Byun, the genius doctor behind the clinical trial. He described the process by which the experiment was carried out and the advantages that resulted from the human being's brilliant try. To develop a self-replicating protein, scientists took the nucleus from salmon and tuna and spliced it into embryonic stem cells. This gives society an endless supply of energy in the hopes of addressing their most pressing issue, hunger. Several reporters prepped him with questions, and he answered each one in turn. According to one journalist, this experiment may be the first of its kind to be Nobel Prize worthy. The audience was in awe and felt it was a brilliant medical innovation right away. Meanwhile, Sang Woon and Jin headed to Dr. Byun's house to finish their documentary for Gu. They're fighting over how much money Jean should get in exchange for her support of this project. When Dr. Byun arrived, Jin was able to halt him and Sang Woon could get a good perspective on him with his camera before anybody else. The doctor, on the other hand, is knowledgeable. In the blink of an eye, he had escaped from his clutches. A woman in a vehicle ran over Jin before he could flee. Gu continued to live his life as usual. It seems as though the public's interest in him will never wane. Ganmi Medical was slammed for its questionable business ethics. People are sympathetic to the mutated creature. As a horrifying deformed goo, he became a metaphor for hopeless young people, and he became the subject of intense fascination. Goo grew in popularity and was taken up by the general public. Goo became the focus of everyone's attention as they discussed their issues. Deliberations about Goo's nascent severe social issues continue interminably. Attorney Kim Tae-gon is now in the public eye, a graduate of Judicial Civil Law School and a well-known South Korean human rights lawyer who led many strikes and fought for the rights of minorities. He was prominent in the human rights movement and offered his services free of charge on Gu's behalf. He assured the reporters who were anxiously waiting Gu's arrival that yes, we will win this case. He was full of confidence. Strangely, as time passed for Gu, the media seems to be siding with Dr. Byun. His work was lauded, but he was challenged by others who made flimsy reasons to discredit Gu. Dr. Byun dubbed the newly developed food protein the food of the future because of its poo-like look. In his interview, Dr. Byun boasted that it tasted just like flesh. They're just working on the tastes right now, including cream cheese, tomato sauce, and perhaps more. As a result, back at the new station where Sang Woon works, the director inquired whether Gu and his crew were still in the dark about who he was and what his primary motivation was toward them. The director quickly requested the video that Sang Woon had gathered and offered to provide him a permanent position at the station to pull out of the documentary project. He gave the command, and it only took one decisive strike to change the course of history. Gu has been accused of breaking his contract with Ganmi Medical. During the early days of trial, he was accused of sexual harassment by a nurse who attended for him. The lawyer and his father pressed him on the matter, but he flatly rejected the allegations. All of a sudden, Gu's hope for justice went drastically down. People raged over the irrational verdict and immediately began a candlelit vigil. The critics' voices become even louder. Sang Woon's father showed up in one rainy morning, handing Gu a letter that said, I'm sorry, I'll just disappear. The station director called Sang Woon and inquired as to why he was still working on the documentary. If Gu's crew discovered his true identity, he will be accused of being self-centered. The director is worried that Sang Woon would abandon the scoop he started. After that, he headed to the office as instructed by the director. Employees on strike recognized him as a Gu member and snatched the recordings from his hands. As he entered the station, all of his efforts on this endeavor was for nothing. After that, when he returned to his flat, he saw bloodstains on the floor. As he investigated the clues, he found part Gu battered and bloodied in his bathtub. He carried on filming for his documentary with Gu. During the transition from night to daylight, he would see attorney Kim Tae Gon when he found out that Dr. Byun's legal team and attorney Kim were dealing with the problem secretly. He is a traitor! The next thing that occurred as attorney Kim was ready to tell Gu what he had found was a surprise to him. He discovered Gu's suicide attempt at his apartment, where he found him strung up on a rope. Gu didn't die. He forgot that he was a fish with gills on his head. That's how he earned his name. Only the rope scrapes and snags were visible on him. To face Sang Won as a traitor, attorney Kim went to the hospital where Gu was being held captive. They found out that the documentary was really a ruse to obtain information about the fishman's whereabout and source. Gu went to Jin's residence to say his goodbyes after he was released from the hospital. Jin bared his soul to Gu, 
Telling him he had no feelings for him, he realized what was going to happen at that point and made the conscious decision to stop the chaos he had sparked. He hands himself in and is sentenced to death. He is being abused in a sterile environment. To make matters worse, he was electrocuted and given the wrong medication, both of which contributed to his unconsciousness. So weak and vulnerable, he's almost pitiful to see. He has no power, it's difficult to walk or speak. He was only alive for a short time before he died. He was laid to rest in a dignified manner, as a human person, not a fish. The story is well known to the whole community. The movie ends with everyone's lives returning to normal except for Dr. Bunes. He was found guilty and given a life sentence for violating Gu's human rights. With regards to Sang Woon, he's still employed at the network station. While still working on a video, Jin discovers him and presents him with a photograph of a beach scene. Gu's hand was the first thing he noticed when he arrived. Sang Woon went straight to Dr. Byun and demanded to know where Gu was. Dr. Byun recalled that Gu was a fish at the time when he was powerless and executed. Even though he can't go back in time, he can extend Gu's life. In the end, they decided to cast Gu into the sea. There is no real need for Gu to die. Dr. Byun has already taken responsibility for the harm he caused to Gu. In the end, Sang Woon returned to the station where he decided to resign from his position as a journalist to pursue Gu's project documentary in the Philippines' Boracay beaches. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks guys. Have a great day and see you in the next video.